Shabbat Shalom, I'm Rabbi David Levine, and this is Live from Home. Shabbat Shalom, Mishpacha, I'm Sandy Levine. And this is Jack with us behind. <laughs> I want to welcome our Beth Israel Messianic Synagogue members and all of our podcast listeners from around the world. This is Yom Shabbat on Saturday, July 25th, 2020. This morning, Brian and Deanne Rose will welcome us into their home and lead us in Hebrew prayers and worship. And after that, Rabbi Yuri and I will join live from home. We will also pray God's blessings over the children and adults, and then we'll study the scriptures together. We will return to the Rose Home at the end for a final worship song. So right now, I want to encourage you to use the share button on this Facebook post, and that way you can invite your Facebook friends right now to join us as we're getting started. And if you haven't already, please hit the like and the follow buttons too. We do want to encourage you to participate actively during this session with your comments. And at the beginning, we'd like to greet one another in the comment section. And then after the worship, we will study together. And during that time, it's great to use the comments differently, to put in scripture references that we're using, the text from one of the scriptures, or a pull quote from our teachings. So special greetings to our international friends all over the world. A warm welcome to all our podcast listeners and to everyone who has discovered us on Facebook Live and joined us now for the first time. A very warm greeting to you. So glad you could be with us now. I also want to send birthday greetings to Chris Dorman. Happy birthday, Chris. Happy birthday, Chris. 84 years old today. Congratulations, Chris, on this wonderful day. As we get ready to worship, let's thank the Lord for Chris and for Shabbat. Lord, thank you for thank Chris you. Dorman. Thank you for the life that you have given him and the way you've sustained him and the way you've used him in many ways. And let this special birthday, this 84th birthday today, be a time of great celebration for him. Lord, we thank you for this Shabbat that we can be together and we can be with you and rest and be refreshed. So from Sandy and me, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Now let's join the Roses and live from home. Hi everyone, good morning, Shabbat Shalom. I'm Brian Rose, this is my wife Deanne, and we wanna welcome you to our home. Let's begin our time of worship together with the Shema. So wherever you are, you can turn and face towards Jerusalem and join together. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Baruch Shem Kevod Malchuto Le'olam va'ed. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. Blessed is the name of his glorious kingdom for all eternity. And now the Veshamru, the scriptural basis for why we gather together every Shabbat. The children of Israel shall keep the Shabbat observing it throughout their generations as an everlasting covenant. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For in six days, the Lord made the heavens and the earth. And on the seventh day, he rested and was refreshed. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another, and from one Shabbat to another, all flesh shall come to worship before me, says the Lord. This Ruben is Oh, 
singing songs to the Lord and worshiping together. If you'd like to sing along with us and you're on Facebook, you can look in the comment section. The lyrics are right there. We'll just begin our time to worship the Lord.
song. What a wonderful rendition of Psalm 23, the 23rd Psalm, written by Eric Painter. I think it was composed for Campora, and we have tender memories of that. What a great, what a great time of worship. Thank you, Brian and Deanne, for leading us in worship. Right now, I want to encourage you to actively participate in a time of blessing this morning. It's been our tradition to gather the children under a large and fantastic talit in the synagogue and then to gather the adults and to pray a blessing over them. And we want you to participate at home. If you have your talit nearby, take it and gather your family with you. And you know what would be great? If you would take a picture too of everyone at your home under the talit and send it to me, what a beautiful way to bring your family together. Here's the blessing that's on my heart. I wanna pray God's blessing of courage and encouragement upon you. Courage to face the challenges of life and encouragement in this way that you would have encouraging words for each other. It is so fantastic when family members can encourage family members, when you know that the ones around you who are closest to you, the ones who are with you every day, can speak words that cause your own heart to be strong and to be courageous. I wanna encourage you, please join in with this blessing. So let me pray for you. Lord, thank you that you are a God who answers our prayers and you speak to us. You, you open things up for our understanding and you also build us up and you make us full of life. And I pray, Lord, that you would fill up every man, woman, and child, every teenager, every person, young and old, this morning with courage and encouragement. Let us have courage that we can face the challenges that are in front of us with the kind of bravery that we need for these times and a positive perspective as well. And let us also have encouragement for ourselves and let us receive encouragement from one another and let us give encouragement to one another. Lord, I pray for every person's heart and mind right now that you would fill us with encouragement and that encouraging words could flow from us to other people as well. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. So right now what we want to do is take a minute and greet people through the comment section. So we're going to have a time of fellowship like we would if we were in the synagogue after the, uh, the Torah blessing. And you can greet two or three people by name in the comments section. Write some names right now and just encourage some people by greeting them by name. We can thank Brian and Deanne Rose. Shabbat Shalom, Brian and Deanne. And some of you, why don't you go ahead and greet each other by name? Pick one or two people, two or three people, and write their names with a special Shabbat Shalom greeting. I'm looking at the greeting section right now. And Shabbat Shalom to Travis Dexter House. And Michael Gordon writes Shabbat Shalom to Aaron and Kim. And Shabbat Shalom to my wife, Sandy, who's in uh, the other room. Shabbat Shalom from Patricia Cazares and others are writing Shabbat Shalom as well. Tracy 
A. Bush writes, Hi, Yaffa and Alex and Loris Chambers. Beautiful praise and worship as always, Brian and Deanne. So it's really a great time for us to have fellowship. We just take a minute for this. And then after this time of greeting one another, this time of fellowship together, which is going to conclude in just about 15 seconds, um, then we are going to welcome Rabbi Yuri to bring a word from this week's Torah portion and scripture readings. So everyone, Shabbat Shalom now. Let's welcome Rabbi Yuri to Live From Home. Thank you, Rabbi David. Shabbat Shalom congregation. Good morning, everyone. And welcome into our home today. So good to, to have fellowship with you. Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom. Yeah, I see so many people are here with us today. Today is very interesting and informative chapter from the Torah, and um, I want to show one very interesting and important key or secret for our faithful and successful walk with the Lord. And uh, let's go together in the, in the scriptures. Let's uh, read together because we'll have many scriptures for today and many interesting ideas there. Nothing new, but I believe everything is very important for us today. So let's start with uh, Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 3, from today's Torah portion, Devarim, words. So Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 3. And let's uh, read together. On the first day, on the 11th month of the 40th year, Moshe spoke to the people of Israel. And I would, would like to uh, make a point here. 11th month, first day of the 11th month of the 40th year. So one month before entering into the promised land, right before. Moshe spoke to the people of Israel, reviewing everything Adonai had ordered him to tell them. And I love this word, reviewing everything. And in the scriptures that follow, uh, we can read, we can find the history of our people during the 40 years in the desert. As Moses reviewed it for the tribes according to Adonai's instruction. So he reviewed all the history, all the way, everything what happened uh, with people of Israel throughout 40 years. It was very important moments of, of their life. Moshe reminds them of all that had happened to them during the time, about the events that have taken place in the wilderness, about their actions and the consequences of their decisions. It was very important and very straight talk to people of Israel. So what, what happened there? This is the idea for today, what I want to share with you. Moses make them stop to take a good look at their past. It was a very crucial and important day in the life of Israel. They think about their, what they have gone through, evaluate their responses to events of that period, take time to regroup their thinking. It is very important to have this time. For us also, I believe, very important that we also reflect on our own history and our own life. It's very important for us. <laughs> because often we are in such a hurry with our daily living <clears throat> that we may not even have time to think clear. So many things going around, so many things we need to think about, so many things we need to do in our life. And, you know, I want to share one secret with you. It will never, never end. Every day we'll have so many things to think, so many problems to resolve. So, but we need to have time. Sometimes we are so busy that we may forget events of not only the distant past, but even what happened to us only yesterday. Life is very speedy. I believe, strongly believe from this Torah portion that we need to remember our past. We need to count our mistakes. And we need to consider our example and experience. I believe that 
we need to remember not only good things of our life, but also difficulties in our life, what happened to us. And I know when we are thinking about our past, we can find that even in bad situations of our life and bad decisions, the Lord is also with us to, 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 to be with us, to, to bless us, to take care of us. I want to read one psalm, Psalm 46, because this psalm uh, goes along with this place of scripture from, the, from Deuteronomy. Psalm 46, verse 11 and verse 12. It's a great uh, commandment. It's a great example for us from the scriptures. So Psalms 46, verse 11 and 12. And I love this beginning of this psalm, of this place. Be still and know that I'm God. I'm exalted among the nations. I'm exalted in the earth. Verse 12. Adonai Tzavod is with us. The God of Jacob is our strong tower. Everything starts with these words. Be still. Be still, it means stop, pass. The important way to know the Lord, to find him in the midst of our struggles and struggles of your life, the most important thing is stop and know and find the Lord where he is in your life right now. And verse 12, I love because we can find that uh, the Lord says, I'm Adonai Tsevaot and I'm with you. God of warriors, God of armies with us to protect us, to lead us, to be shield for us. And also the God of Jacob is our strong tower. We know the story of Jacob. Many years of his life, he was struggling, but the Lord was always with him. And the same Lord, the same God, he promised to be with us and to be the same strong tower for us as he was for Jacob. I know that the wrong thoughts gives rise to a sin. A wrong action pushes for a wrong reactions and etc. And I know that many wrong decisions have been made simply because we did not take time to consider. We didn't take to reason soberly regarding of situation. And I know when we reacted quickly, uh, sometimes we reacted on the basis of fear or pressure or anxiety or anger, but this is not the right reaction. The first reaction from the Lord, be still, think about what the Lord is doing right now. I want to read Jeremiah chapter six, one of the great advice from the scripture from the Lord to us. Jeremiah chapter six, verse 16. And I think this is so important for us and not only for us, but for people of America, for people in Israel, for everyone, every mankind. This is the answer for us. Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 16. Thus says Adonai, stand in the roads and look. I don't think it's about roads of Jacksonville. <laughs> it is about roads of our lives. It's about our own experience and also experience of people of God, the ancient roads ways of the Lord. Ask for the ancient paths where the good way is and walk in it. Then you will find rest for your souls. But they said, we won't walk in it. Yeah, it's hard for people, for flesh to follow the Lord, but this is only the way to go. Ask for ancient paths, path of the Lord, path of righteousness in the Lord and walk in it. And only then you will find rest, Shabbat, Shalom for your souls. Again and again, the Lord reminds us to remember, to think, to stop and find the Lord in the daily routine of our lives. I know it is hard, but it is important. Look at your past. Consider your mistakes and victories. Find the Lord there. Find his ways, not yours, but his ways. 
Today I want to share with you with simple steps, some instructions for a stable life with God, uh, how to find these ancient steps. And I promise you, I won't say anything new today because it is the ancient paths. It's nothing new, but it's an important path for us. Some of them from my own experience, and I know sometimes we may need to do mistake to remember what, how to do right. So first uh, step, and the most important, stay still, stop, pause. That's the first thing, and I believe for many people, it is the most difficult thing to do, especially when you are in the midst of something in your life. Stay still. I love this uh, saying, if you don't know what to do, the best thing to do is do nothing. The best way is consider your ways. And in Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 2, Deuteronomy 8, verse 2, I want to read it because it's the same idea here. You are, and it's commandment for us, it's commandment for people of Israel, you are to remember all the way, and let's say together, all the way, not only good parts of the way or bad parts of the way, but you are to remember all the way that Adonai your God has led you these 40 years in the wilderness. And I know that some of the ways were not pleasant and it's not easy to remember because it was shameful time in the people of Israel. But you are to remember everything in order to humble you, to test you, to know what was in your heart whether you would keep his mitzvot or not. So the main idea of wilderness is to show to the people of Israel what's in their hearts, is to change them, is to make them new. In our lives, so simple, ask, pray, consult about the right ways. And I know it takes humility, sincerity to walk in the in path of the Messiah. His path is not easy path. His path is the path of humility and we are called to follow Messiah. It's our calling because we are his children and he's our Lord. And it's actually, it's a beautiful way. So the second uh, step, the second path, stay in the word, stay in the word of God. What else can we rely on today? Emotions, feelings, word opinions, news, life experience, Today, everything contradicts itself. The word, world is going off. But the only word of God is true. I believe today we need to fall in love with the word and communication with God. In doing that, we can find everything we need. All wisdom, experience, success, consolation, strength. Let's read scripture. Let's love scriptures. Let's be in the scriptures. It's so important for us. One of the most complete pictures about the importance of scripture we can find in 2 Timothy verse 3, uh, chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. And I want to read these two uh, interesting places in scripture, two verses. And I love it. All scripture, and again, all scripture, it's not only part of scripture, not only good side of scripture. I know um, some people like, I mean, everyone, I think, or many people likes to read only, you know, special places of scripture, <laughs> but all scripture is inspired by God and useful for teaching, for reproof, for restoration, and for training in righteousness. So teaching, reproof, restoration. We need restoration from the Lord for training in righteousness so that the person belonging to God may be capable, fully equipped for every good deed. What I see in this verse 17, that if we want to be equipped, if we want to be equipped and capable, you know, so many things going on and so many people around us. But I believe we want to be capable to 
to be children of God, to do his will and good deeds. And the only way to do that and be um, capable is through the scriptures. It's to know the will of God is to be built on the foundation of his will. What can we add here? If we want to be wise and know the Lord, the only way is to love his word. It is source of God's wisdom for us today. And I know that the uh, world, world will change a lot and countries will change and we'll have so many things going on ahead of us. But one thing never change. This is the Lord and his word. It's always the same. It's always stable. It's always important for us to know. And I know we want to change the world. It's our intention to change the world. And I, I can tell you, the best way to change the world is to change yourself. This is the beginning of the changing of the wor world around us. So third way, repent of the wrong and do right. Correct your mistake. It's, it's, it means the walk in the shua, into, in the repentance, in the repented heart. Be courage, courageous and humble enough to admit the truth and deeply regret and change paths. I want to read uh, from book of Revelation, chapter 21. And, you know, the Moses, he, was, he stood uh, one month before uh, people of Israel entered the promised land. And he told them to remember. Here, Revelation is the end of everything. And I want to read what's the most important thing for us to consider. So Revelation chapter 21, verse 6 and 7. Then he said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Now we are in the middle of something. Every one of us who is watching us, watching me today, we are in the middle of something. And it's a big part of us what we will do with it. Because he said here, I'm the Alpha and Omega. He is the beginning and he is the end. In the end, only he will be the most important in our lives. Only his ways, only his commandments, only he. Again, I'm the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty, I will freely give from the spring of the water of life. To the thirsty. Verse 7, the one who overcomes shall inherit these things. And I will be his God, and he shall be my son. The one who overcomes. Not just those who wish will enter in the kingdom of heaven. Not only those who, who pray or who desire, but the most important, those who thirsty, those who fulfill, who overcome, who seek. This is, reminds me of the words of Yeshua, be not just he hearers of the word, but doers. The fourth thing and uh, we have only 20 more. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm joking. The fourth thing, keep shalom with the Lord. Be in shalom with the Lord. Be in shalom with God. Yohanan, John chapter 14, verse 27. Beautiful words from Messiah. Shalom, I leave you. So he is in the heaven, but he left his shalom with you. My shalom I give to you, but not as the world gives. Do not let your heart be troubled or afraid. In this word, there's so much deepness here. Shalom already with you. Do not let your heart be troubled or afraid. Only you can allow shalom to go away because the Lord give you this shalom. You can stand in this shalom. You can live in this shalom. One of the greatest gifts for us is God's peace. In my life, when I found the Messiah, I found forgiveness, reconciliation, 
peace with God, shalom with God. And I will never give up and I will not trade it for anything in the world. I know the truth. Often we do not have much in this life. But we have shalom. We are happy. And though we do not have much or everything we want to have, we are joyful, satisfied, fulfilled, accepted. We live with purpose and purpose and goal which the Lord has set before us in his shalom. And the last thing, do not stop in your prayer life. Go farther. It is always to pray for. I know from uh, my experience and also experience of many people that many people gave up on their prayers. Many people were disappointed for lack of an, of an answer, not knowing that the answer from heaven was only another minute away, almost there. Let's not give up. Let's not turn back when the race is 99% complete. Continue, pursue. Luke chapter 12, verse 32. Do not be afraid, little flock, for your father is pleased to give you the kingdom. Do not be afraid, little flock. Continue, press in, do that. Keep hope, keep it more than anything else you have. Even though everything else will be disappointed, you will not be disappointed. If everyone else will be tempted, you will not be tempted. If everyone else will grow cold, you will not grow cold. If everyone else will retreat, you will not retreat. If everyone else will fail, you will not, because you have hope, peace, prayer, the Lord with you. Life in God is amazing and beautiful, full of joy and thrills, full of meaning and victories. So let us up and go on. You can go through, through the pain of disappointments, failures, fails, forward to new haze. Yeshua is your hope, your future, everything for you. Thank you so much. And let's welcome Rabbi David. Rabbi David. Thank you, Rabbi Yuri. I think that was a very practical lesson for us on how to stay close to the Lord and how to move forward as well. And it reminds us that the scriptures look at the good, the bad, and the ugly of Israel's history and, and give us the unvarnished truth, telling us the story without glossing over the, the difficult parts and the ugly parts. And that's a way of teaching us to do the same with our lives, to look at our lives carefully, to examine ourselves carefully, and to acknowledge our failures, and then to learn from them and to move forward. This week's Torah reading, helps us take a look at Israel's sins on the journey from Egypt to the Promised Land. And think of some of the sins that are mentioned, the sin of the golden calf. I, I like what one sage said that that's the kind of sin that can only happen when you've got too much gold. Another sin, the sin of complaining about food or complaining about leadership. And then the sin of just complaining about life's difficulties. And it seems like Israel is being depicted as, as the most skillful fetchers on the face of the earth, those who can complain about anything. But as we're reading about Israel's sins, it's important to remember we are all vulnerable too. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13 makes this very clear. No temptation has seized you. No temptation has gotten a hold of you, has tried to get a hold of you, except what is common to man. And God is faithful. He will not let you be defeated during your times of testing. But when you are tempted and tested, he will provide a way of escape. So why is it sometimes that we're tempted and we fail? It can be because we don't take the way of escape that the Lord has for us. And it's important for us to learn that each one of us 
has challenges. Each one of us will experience difficulties that will reveal our weaknesses so that we can address them and so that we can get stronger. It's important for us to, to have a Kadima attitude about life, to look it in a forward and positive way, but it's also important for us to learn about our mistakes so that we don't just continue to repeat them. And it's important as well for us to address the deepest, most underlying uh, issues about our sin and not just the superficial issues. Well, this passage is meant to help us recognize our vulnerabilities and to push us towards the question, what can we do about our own vulnerability to sin? And that's important if we're going to ask this question, what kind of future do I want? Where am I headed? Let's look for a minute at Moses' recollection of the time when the Lord wanted to bring the children of Israel into the promised land. And 12 leaders had been sent out to spy the land and to bring back a report to Moses. So you can turn to Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 25, and we'll start there. We'll look at a few verses. Why don't you write this in the comments section right now? Deuteronomy 1, verse 25 through 28. That will be a good reference for you and for others who are watching with us. And I encourage as many of you as can to put the scripture references in. Some, some of the folks with us in the Mishpacha are terrific at doing this, but one of the ways that you can participate more actively is to write in the comments section yourself. It's like taking notes. And I know some of you can't do that because of the way that um, you're having to watch Facebook and the tools that you have, but that's okay too. But if everyone who can puts effort into it, it's a way of showing that you're paying attention, showing that you're active, showing that you're listening and that you are turning as well to the scriptures and that you want others to do the same. Deuteronomy chapter one, starting in verse 25 says, the spies took some of the produce of the land and brought it down to us. This is Moses talking. They also brought back word to us. This was the word, the land Adonai our God is giving to us is good. And so Moses is focusing on the positive perspective that was presented by only two of the spies. But what did they do? They presented real evidence. Here's the produce. And then they presented a perspective that was very important. The land the Lord our God is giving us is good. I love the fact that Moses is underlying the, underlining the good reports that were given and that he's including this essential detail. The land the Lord our God is giving us is good. In the midst of our own current challenges and the challenges that people are facing all over the globe, do we have the same kind of positive attitude? Can we look at the future with all of its challenges and recognize that it's a future that God is bringing us into? Let's keep this in mind. Now the tone turns, verse 26, but you would not go up. Instead, you rebelled against the command, the order of Adonai your God, and in your tents you complained. When you were by yourselves, when you were together, you were just fetching with each other about the situation. And this is the complaining that you were making. Here's Moses is like listening in. He's overhearing the conversations of Israel in their tents. It's because Adonai hated us that he's brought us out of the land of Egypt only to hand us over to the Amorites to destroy us. Oh, that kind of statement is so insidious because it really comes from the adversary who rebukes the motives of the Lord. And then verse 28, what sort of place is it that we're headed for? That kind of questioning. That, that doubts the, the direction that the people are going in and the destination that they have, that God has given them. This is also insidious. And then the blaming is next. Our brothers made our courage fail when they said the people are bigger and taller than we are. The cities are great and fortified up to the sky. And finally, we've seen Anakim there. We've seen the giants there. So in this case, there's a shift of blame. It's because the others 
told us the truth about what's ahead. Have you noticed how difficult it is in our current age for politicians to just tell us the truth? They want to blame someone or they want to evade responsibility often. But what's so useful is just to tell the truth and say, this is what's ahead. And these are the challenges that we face. Now let's put our best efforts into facing this challenge together. Let's strengthen each other, let's encourage each other. Maybe that's not the role that they can take in uh, modern American society, but that's a role that we need to take, that you and I need to take. We don't need the tone of politicians nor, nor the spin that politicians like to put on things or the ways that people like to make their side look better and side with those that agree with them and then, um, diminish those who are against them. What's useful for us is just to tell the truth about what's ahead and to look at it carefully and to strengthen ourselves and to say, in light of where we're going, what are we going to need? Well, what do we need at such times as this? The same things that Israel needed. I'll name a few. Courage. We need courage. We need faith. We need to know that we trust God and that he has enabled us by his mercy to have a trusting relationship with him. And we also need a sense of hope and a future. These are four important things. I could put it this way, courage, faith, a sense of hope, and a sense of a future. These are things that we need. We need them for ourselves, but we also need them so that we can give them to others. We need them for ourselves so we can give them to our families. Every person struggles, I know I do. Don't you struggle too during these challenging times? But I can tell you this, we need to learn how to find strength in the Lord. And one of the ways that we can do that is by going to the scriptures that speak to us directly about the very thing that we need. If you need courage, because you're discouraged, go to the scriptures and, and put effort into reading for yourself scriptures that will build up your courage and that will encourage you. If you're hopeless, do the same. Don't just look at everything that has to do with hopelessness. Don't just listen to hopeless voices. That won't necessarily help you. What's important is to read scriptures that will fortify you with hope. If you're hopeless, you need hope. So get some hope. How do you get hope? You go to scriptures that speak about hope and you take it into your heart and then you agree with them. This is very important to have a active and positive response to the scriptures that you read. Some people read the scriptures very fast and they read them without thinking very carefully about them. They read them in a way that they're sort of glossing over them and it's almost a blah, blah, blah kind of reading. They're just getting through. They're going through the motions. They're not allowing the word of God to be sharper than a two-edged sword to separate from soul soul from spirit and to judge the attitudes of the heart. Well, if you know that you need something of, of hope, if you know you need courage, then read the scriptures that speak to that, take them in and ponder them and take a position about them. Here's one of the ways that you can do it. You can go to Jeremiah 29 verse 11. This is one of my favorite scriptures and it helps me so much during times of difficulty and when I can anticipate difficulty. And I wanna encourage you to write this scripture down, this reference down, Jeremiah 29 verse 11. If this is one of your favorite scriptures, why don't you write that too in the comment section? You can say, this is a favorite scripture of mine too. Jeremiah 29 11 is a favorite for me too. Take the time to tell other people now. Don't be greeting each other, shalom, shalom, hello everybody. That's, that's fine to do at other times, but right now we're studying together and we are trying to strengthen ourselves together and to encourage each other. Pay close attention to this. Jeremiah 29 verse 11 helps me. I think it can help you too. Let me read it to you. For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord plans to prosper you 
and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. The Lord knows the plans. The Lord has plans. Take, take a solid position about this yourself. Do you believe, do you know, are you certain that the Lord makes plans that touch you? Are you aware? Do you remind yourself? Do you recall? Do you review things that God said he would do and then he accomplished them? Do you strengthen yourself by paying attention to promises that God has made and he has fulfilled? I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. God's plans are plans for good and, and not just not just the good of sensation or the good of our appetites being satisfied, but shalom. Shalom, which represents not just the absence of, of bad, but the presence of good. It represents completion and fullness. It, it represents maturity as well in growth and in prosperity of the soul and the spirit, the way we think and the way that, that we are. It's prosperity of our character. The fruit of the spirit is connected to shalom as well. God's plans are for shalom and not for evil, not for bad, not for disaster. He has plans to give you a future. Can you write that down? God plans to give me a future and a hope. God has plans so that I will have hope and a future. God plans for me, name yourself, for me, I'll do it. God has plans for me, David Levine, to have a hope, Tikva, to have a future. He has plans. He has determined from the foundations of the earth that he wants to do good for me, that he wants to get me through challenging times, and that he knows the future that he has in mind, and he wants me to know this future as well. Can you say the same thing for yourself? God has a hope and a future for me and then insert your name. Put that in the comments right now. Actively engage in this way. This is a way that you can participate and we can participate together during this time when we're um, gathering like this. And it's very important that we learn how to do this. It's important that we learn how to use every tool and every resource that's possible for us in order to accomplish the purposes of God. One of the most significant promises of the new covenant is that you and I, that everyone who turns to Yeshua will become new creations. We're not just the same old people who are dressed up. We're not just the same old people who are put in new spiritual clothes, if you will, or who have adopted religious mannerisms. We're new people from the inside out. This is expressed very clearly in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 17 through 18. If anyone is in Messiah, he or she is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, that's a good biblical word, but it's not a word you would use very often in your daily life. I, I doubt anyone's going around these days saying, behold, it kind of sounds strange, doesn't it? But what do we say in our time? We say, look out, look out everyone, the new has come. Pay attention everyone, heads up. Look out everyone, I love that. Look out, the new has come. Verse 18, all this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Messiah, and he gave us the ministry of reconciliation. This is important to, to notice about ourselves. We are new creations in Messiah. We're not just coping. It's not just the old you trying to cope to reach religious objectives and goals and to use the old person to accomplish the new means. No, we have been made new. Look out, the new has come. We have been made new. 
We've been reconciled to God through Messiah. So that wall that separated us, that separated us, the wall of our sin, of our iniquity, of our transgressions, the, the barrier between us and God, we have been reconciled to God. We have experienced reconciliation and it gives us a new advantage in life. We can stay close to the Lord and whenever we fail, we can find a way back to the Lord. We can help each others be reconciled to God as well we can be reconciled as well to each other. That is awesome. I want to encourage you to take advantage of the fact that you're a new creation. You see, we're like new wine in new wineskins. You can't put new wine in old wineskins. When, when we identify with the death, burial, and the resurrection of Yeshua, when we're immersed in water, when we're filled with the Holy Spirit, it's like we become new wine that's put in new wineskins. That's why the apostles could say, you have died with him, and now you are alive with him. You see, we have resurrection life. We have a paradigmatic change. Our paradigm has changed. We're new wine in new wineskins. We're new men, we're new women, we are new creations. And this is connected to the prophetic purposes that are described in many places in the scriptures. I, I want to draw your attention to a few, to Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 16. Would you turn there? This is an instruction that is given to Israel. Circumcise your hearts. Circumcise your hearts, therefore, and don't be stiff-necked any longer. Don't be stubborn any longer. You need to circumcise your heart. Now, in verse, in chapter 30 of Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 30, verse 6, there's an important change in the direction that is given. It says this, <clears throat> the Lord your God will circumcise your hearts. That's interesting. When you recognize that you need your heart circumcised and you try to do it yourself, you realize you can't do it. You can't do it. You can intend to do it. You can want to do it, but you cannot do it. How do you circumcise a spiritual heart? You can't get there yourself. This is why in Deuteronomy 30, there is a change now that you know that you should circumcise your heart, and now that you know you can't, know this, the Lord your God will circumcise your hearts and the hearts of your descendants. God is concerned for you, but he's also concerned for the hope and the future that's connected to you, to your family now, to your children, to your grandchildren, and to those that have not even been born yet. The Lord your God will circumcise your hearts and the hearts of your descendants so that, this is very interesting, so that you may love him with all your heart and with all your soul and live. You see, one of the great commands is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and strength. But it's not possible to do that no matter how religious you are, no matter how many ways you try to follow the laws of God, you can't do that on your own unless God circumcises your heart. You will not be able to love him with all your heart and with all your soul. You won't have all the life that you need. Ezekiel takes it a step further. Ezekiel 36, verse 26. Please write this in the comments. It'd be great if 10 or 12 of you would do that right now. Ezekiel 36, verse 26. This is a promise from the Lord. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. Oh, this is so powerful. Not only do we need a new heart, we need a new spirit as well. And then the Lord says, I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. This is a promise that God makes. You need to circumcise your heart, you can't do it. When you recognize that you need it and can't do it, you can give up and say, ah, oh, this is a waste of time. Or you can humble yourself before God and say something very honest and sincere. I need it, I can't do it. I can't do this for myself. I need it for myself and I can't accomplish it myself. 
Some people have such difficulty acknowledging their helplessness or their powerlessness about ultimate things of importance like this. But this is where real, real humility is required, where we humble ourselves before God and we say to God, I need this and I can't do it. Will you do it for me? What a merciful God, what a compassionate God we serve. You see, when we get to that place, when we can acknowledge our need in our insufficiency and we turn to the all sufficient one, God Almighty, our creator, our redeemer, and we turn to him and we say, Lord, will you do this for me? Then with grace, he opens up the way. And what is the way? This is the hard part and it requires more humility. He opens up the way of Messiah Yeshua. And why Messiah? Because you and I need a sacrifice that covers over our sin, that removes our sin, that transforms us. The death, burial, and resurrection of Yeshua provided that sacrifice as well as demonstrating to us and to all mankind for all history that God has made a way to overcome the power of sin and the power of death, and that it requires resurrection life. We have the offering, we have the resurrection, we have the proof, and now we can enter into this by welcoming the sacrifice that God has made on our behalf. This is the way, humbly coming before the Lord and saying, Lord, I couldn't do it myself, but I thank you that you have done it for me. I can't provide the sacrifice, but you have provided the sacrifice. I can't resurrect myself. I can't reinvent myself in that spiritual way, but you can do it. This is very important to recognize Yeshua and all that he has done. Well, now I want to turn to Ephesians chapter 4, because we'll look at what our part is in all of this. And the apostle writing to the Ephesians is very practical, but he writes in very concise ways about very important ideas that are worth thinking about and examining. I encourage you to, to take notes, Ephesians chapter 4, verses 22 through 24. But I also encourage you to read the scriptures yourself, and I encourage you to do something else, and that is to play back the podcast or to play back the Facebook Live video when it posts or to watch it on YouTube and to take notes as you're watching and to actually pause when something touches you and write a reflective note about what it means to you and what you understand God wants you to do and that you can do in light of that understanding. Ephesians chapter 4 starting in verse 22. Put off your former way of life. Yes, we need to acknowledge that that way of life is not actually a way of life. It's a way of death, and we put that off. Put off your old self. Don't just try to cope with your old self, but put off that old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires. You see, that old, foot, that old self really wants to do everything on its own. It wants to be self-sufficient and not dependent on God. It wants to define what is good on its own terms. Put off that old self. It's corrupt. It has deceitful desires. It will tell you things that are just lies. And when you do this through your new relationship with Messiah, you'll have power and you will be experiencing something that's completely new. You'll have an, an advantage in this life that you never had before. Verse 23 tells us some of the positive things that come. Be renewed in the spirit of your minds. What a profound idea to be renewed in the way we think, but also in the spirit of our minds. There is a spiritual connection between our mind and, and our spirit. There's a connection between our mind in God's spirit. There's a connection between our mind and the spiritual world around us and the spiritual forces around us. Be renewed, be made new in the spirit of your mind. Verse 24, put on the new self. It's one thing to put off the old self, but what are you gonna put on? The new self. This is the self 
that has been redeemed. It's the resurrected being that you are and that you can learn to be uh, fully alive in. Put on the new self, created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Your old self is not created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. You can't use it. It's an old wine skin. If you try to pour the new wine of the Lord into that old wine skin, it will break that wine skin and spill the new wine. You need a new wine skin, which has to do with a new heart, a new mind, you need a new spirit, you need all the things we were just reading about from the scriptures. Now, when you take this to heart and you make these central and practical for yourself, you won't be stuck in the past. You won't be trapped by former things. And it's so important, especially at times like this, when everything seems to be in flux, it's important to hold on to eternal purpose and not to temporary forms, especially when it comes to religious things. Well, I want to tell you a story, and I don't know if you're going to make the connection, but yesterday I was, I was thinking about all of this, and I remembered an experience that Sandy and I had with some friends. And, and I'll tell you the story and then see if I can help you make the connection. It, it has to do with the way that we think about what's possible and the way that we approach the challenges that are in our life and all around us. So it was 1981 and Sandy and I had gone with some friends to Israel and then we stopped in Switzerland on the way back and we stayed in Interlaken and we visited uh, Schilthorn and Jungfrau, the Swiss Alps. There are mountains unlike any I had ever seen and it was amazing to me to have that experience. Interlaken is a town close to the base of these mountains and as I remember there was snow on the ground, it was freezing cold weather. But here's the thing that came to my mind yesterday, the thing that I remembered seeing that was so stunning. There were outdoor cafes and people were sitting in outdoor cafes. They were drinking coffee, they were having lunch and they didn't have their coats on and it was freezing. And I thought, this is impossible. Well, it wasn't impossible. The Swiss are very inventive people. They had in every one of these cafes, they had overhead infrared heaters. We'd never seen such a thing. These don't heat the air, they heat people. And we sat in one cafe and it was so warm that we had to take our winter coats off just like everybody else. It was a wonderful experience. And that came to my mind as I was contemplating what does it mean to be a new creation. Now let me see if I can make the connection between that experience and being a new connection. And I hope you can, you can help me with your active imagination. There was a possibility to live differently in the middle of winter than I could have imagined. I had many winters in America, in Virginia, in Rochester, New York, in Iowa. We had experiences of, of cold for extended periods of time, for months at a time. And it never occurred to us we could sit outside and enjoy that cold weather with a cup of coffee and lunch at an outdoor cafe. Oh, we would bundle up and we would play in the snow and we would do things like that. But we just didn't imagine that something like this was possible. The Swiss had a different attitude. It's possible and they figured out how to do it. Now, today in America and all over the world, infrared heaters are used more commonly. But this was, this was so many years ago, about 40 years ago, and it was, it was unimaginable to us. And I remember it touched my thinking. It affected my heart and it made me, made me think this way. 
there are some solutions to problems that are actually available to us that we just haven't imagined. If we're stuck in a way of thinking, if we're stuck in an old paradigm, if we're stuck with our old self, you see, because I extended this not to practical things alone and not just to worldly things or to matters of creature comfort, but to spiritual things. If, if we can apply this to our spiritual life, it can open up a new future for us, a new life that we couldn't even imagine. It requires a completely different approach. And that's what Moses was talking about. You need a circumcised heart. You can't fix everything just by trying to rein in your behavior, or trying to confine or mold yourself in the right way behaviorally. It's important to be changed from the inside out. How to do that? Your heart needs to be circumcised. So go ahead and try to do it. And when you can't succeed at that, don't give up. That's when you turn to the Lord and say, Lord, I need you to do it. And the Lord has a way. He has a way that's outside of you, that will change you, that will warm you from the inside out, just like those infrared heaters did, that will change you from the inside out, that will open up opportunity for you that's so different than what you could open up for yourself. The Lord gives us resurrection and Messiah. He gives us creative solutions so we can do things differently, so that spiritually and practically, we can be inventive, we can be forward-looking, we can solve problems, we can find solutions, we can think differently. God has reinvented us. He has created us in a whole new way through Messiah. And we can reflect this with the kind of creativity and inventiveness that is really needed for this season in world history. And from a spiritual point of view, we absolutely need the positive, the creative, can-do perspective. That means we need new hearts, we need new minds, we need the ministry of reconciliation. And when we, when we appreciate all that God has done for us and the ways that he's done, these things for us, then we can fail forward. When we fail in things, we can learn from those so that we move forward because we learn from our failures. Not that we would repeat the same thing again, but that we would learn from it, that we would pay attention, that we would seek the Lord, that we would be instructed by the Lord, that we would receive right, wise counsel, that we would pay attention to our failures and look for God's help in this. I'm gonna close this morning with a scripture that Sandy shared with me from 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 15 through 18. It says this, I'll read to you. Therefore, brethren, and that means brethren and sistern, brothers and sisters, men and women, stand fast and hold the traditions which you were taught, whether by word or epistle. And now may our Lord Yeshua HaMashiach himself and our God and Father who has loved us and given us everlasting consolation and good hope by grace. Would you write that in the comment section right now? Good hope by grace. Verse 17, may he comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word in work and work. What a powerful scripture. Thank you, Rebus and Sandy, for that scripture, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 15 and 18. We are praying for you. We want to encourage you. We want you to be strengthened during this time. And we have been standing together and we will continue to stand together. God has given us the shepherd's hearts and we want to do everything that will build you up and that will keep you safe during these challenging times that are ahead. Well, I want to invite you to strengthen yourself in another way, and that is to go to the Facebook page after this Live From Home uh, broadcast and watch Cantor Aaron Jacobs' Torah teaser. These Torah teasers from, from Cantor Aaron are another powerful tool that we're providing you to help you reflect on the scriptures, to get in the habit of reading the scriptures so that you can grow strong in many ways. 
there are many people in the congregation who have been exposed to COVID-19 or their family has been exposed to COVID-19. We're praying for all of them. If you're part of our Mishpocha, you can participate on our prayer meetings that we have on the first Wednesday and the third Wednesday of each month at 6.30 p.m. And that's a time when we pray for each other. And if you're part of the Mishpocha at Beth Israel, you can also uh, be part of the rabbi's prayer team. And we pray for each other. And we, we have a, a, a number of people that we've been praying for. And we've been getting good reports from those who have been exposed and had symptoms but are coming through the COVID-19 experience that they've had. Or they've been exposed to something that produced symptoms like COVID-19. So I want to encourage you, continue to pray for all of us. This morning, we're not going to take time to pray as we did last night. If you want to pray for everyone, please watch uh, the Friday night service live from home. And especially fast forward or, or find the, the part towards the end of that session when we are praying for people and you enter into that prayer. So we are a house of prayer and it's important for us to be praying for each other. Right now, I want to thank you for your cheerfulness and your generosity and for your support of Beth Israel Messianic Synagogue. Thank you to all the members who are fulfilling your membership commitment by sending in your tithes and giving offerings above and beyond and even sacrificial giving. Thank you, especially for those who have begun to give designated offerings to help underwrite the costs of disinfecting the sanctuary as we prepare for um, in sanctuary events. And thank you for those who are also underwriting the cost of JSO being present there. And we want to be able to cover all of those costs and, and they accumulate as we're getting ready for this. They will be um, almost $2,000 a month, all costs in that are above and beyond our normal operating budget and that are necessary in order to have safety uh, when we do gather together. Your faithful and your steady giving really does make a difference for us. And I want to give a special thanks to those who have set up recurring giving and those who are faithful to um, give on a steady and predictable basis. This gives our budget stability. It gives us the, the, um, the financial stability so that we can pay attention to everything we need to for the good of the congregation. Thank you for that. And I want to thank everyone who's been generous during this time and those who have um, joined us from distant places even and are now supporting Beth Israel. Special thank you. If you want to be supportive of Beth Israel, if you want to be supportive of Live From Home, of Messianic Jewish Teachings Now, you can find out how by going to our webpage, bethisraelnow.com slash giving. And you can find everything you need about how you can make contributions through Giving Fire and PayPal are two online platforms which are very secure and very easy to set up. We've had no security problems whatsoever with them. You can also find our mailing address so that you can send checks in the mail and you can also use your bank's bill pay service in order to send your contributions to us. Thank you for your cheerfulness. Thank you for your continued faithfulness. And thank you for your generosity. And for those of you who have not been supportive financially and you're thinking, I should do that. Well, today's a good day to do it. This is a good day to begin to stand with us shoulder to shoulder as mishpocha and to make your contribution, to join your contribution with the contributions of others. And I can tell you this, when we stand shoulder to shoulder together, we can accomplish so much more than we could ever do by ourselves on our own. That's what Mishpacha is. We're all in this together. Well, I want to close this session with Aaron's blessing. <clears throat> my wife is going to join me. Thank you, my love. I, hey, you know, th this is so much fun. 
Last Friday night, not last night, but last Friday night, we tried a different background and we had lighting problems and all sorts. It was a lighting disaster, I have to tell you. But right now, we're back with good lighting and Jack, Jack yeah. Russell is back. And so, Sandy's back, Jack is back, and I'm here too. So it's wonderful. For those of you who don't know, Jack Russell is a character in stories that I write. And David surprised me with this um, picture because one of my stories was Jack lost in a boat by himself. And so David found this picture and got permission from the photographer and had it made for me. And out of all the art in our house, this is the one he picked for this live from home. So that's the backstory, folks. <laughs> yes, having read Sandy's stories that include Jack Russell, I know that, that he's got a can-do attitude and a positive <laughs> attitude about life. And he's an encouragement for me. Thank you, honey, for <laughs> writing Jack Russell's stories. Let's move just a little bit so Jack is, is between us and not on your head. Um, well, yeah, can we do that? Yeah, there I'll we go. Try. Okay, now it's the three of us. <laughs> We're very casual. We love you. We miss you. And so we're sending air hugs and, and our love to you from our home to you. We're going to close with Aaron's blessing as we normally do at Beth Israel. And then we'll return to the Rose home for a final worship song. So let's gather together now. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep watch over you and guard and protect you. May the Lord cause the light of his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his face to you and give you peace, his peace, his shalom, his hope, and his future for you. In the name of Yeshua, our Messiah. Amen. Now let's go to the Rose family for a final worship song. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Shabbat Shalom. <laughs>
Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Thank you again for joining us this morning, and we will see you next week. Shalom.